<laughs> well, hello there, everybody. It's me. You remember me, right? <laughs> I can't offer you coffee. It's just too hot. But I've got some water. There you go. <laughs> I bought this at um, the theater. And um, I watched The Sound of Freedom. Oh, my gosh. I've been wanting to see that. Well, I did. It was, it's, it's a sad movie. It's eye-opening, but I already knew all that. It was good for it to be traum uh, not traumatized, although um, it was dramatized in an actual real, uh, a good movie, a good script, so that the whole world can see what's going on. But The Sound of Freedom. So I bought this. This cost $5.50. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your very expensive water. Yeah. I'll drink this one. Yeah. Okay. The heat. Oh my gosh. It's like almost 100 degrees in Flagstaff. Yeah. And a lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of people that, that recognize me. There's a lot of people here in Flagstaff. It's one of the coolest spots in Arizona, that is. And I hope you don't mind. I got my fan on high. Let me turn it on low. Let's see if I can still get a breeze going. I did have to buy a new fan. <clears throat> it's just, uh, let me show you. It's just, uh, it's not an Opolar. I don't, here. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's just a, a fan. It's USB only. There's no battery in it. And I bought this new because my other cord was really going bad. And uh, it looked a little difficult for me personally to um, change it out. Let me get this straight. I know I'm a little out of practice on this lighting here and, and getting this straightened around. This water has been sitting in my minivan watching the movie and um, going out for some um, a quick bite to eat. It's warm. Wow. So for me, the heat, it's horrible. I don't know where I'm going to go. I mean, you know, California is looking pretty good. But what I do, I have two 500 jackeries. One's here and one's over there. And I have four chill pads. What you do, if you don't know about these, most of you do, they're, it's a, it's a kind of a, I don't know the name and the material, but it's kind of new over the past few years. And it's, um, it becomes really almost like cardboard when it dries, but it is super absorbent. I put it in um, my bucket, my collapsible bucket, put it in there and I soak it up. Then I really wring it out. And this is just still pretty damp. And I lay it over. I'm not drippy. Okay, I don't want my jackeries to get wet. But I do want the evaporative cooling to happen. And I lay them over. After the movie, I got into my van and it was like 120 degrees inside my van. Yeah, it's a good thing that I have these. I put them over it. And then my other one is, is covered up too. And I do two of them because the top one, you know, this is really dry. When they dry, <laughs> it dries wherever. It's almost like a, a big piece of, um, a big piece of like, I've seen this kind of paper, real thick paper in like art stores, really thick. Okay, so I don't, don't, let me know in comments how hot it is where you're at. Because I looked at the map, the weather map, and it looks like it's red pretty much all over. Up around mi the upper Minnesota, it's a little bit cool. Up on Maine and Vermont, um, it's a little cool. At least it wasn't red, it was yellow. And then along the California coast, it was a little yellow. Other than that, it's pretty much the whole um, country is red. <laughs> it's red zone. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's pretty hot. It's just pretty darn hot. And it's, it's been, um, it's been kind of, it's been difficult for Paul and Abby. And then, um, I've, another friend is up here with us and she's really, she has a little dog and she's really contemplating 
We're all <laughs> contemplating where we're going to go. Um, we might go to California. I don't know. But I do know that it's very hot. And um, we're trying to keep Abby cool, keeping her wet. And, yeah. Well, here's... <laughs> I had a good vacation, a good week. What, what I did was I went up to the Grand Canyon. And uh, Paul went up too. Then eventually on the, the second, third day, our friend came up. And she stayed um, with us too. We all went to the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> I'll show you a little bit of footage throughout the next few uh, videos. I have so much footage. We had to come back. We were going to stay a lot longer. But it was even hotter in the Grand Canyon by about almost 5 degrees. So we just thought, no. Um, can't deal with it. Because when you're out camping, you don't always have shade. I mean, the sun moves and you got trees, right? It's not like being in quartzite. At least in the Grand Canyon uh, camping, you have trees. But that doesn't, the sun is moving. You know, the earth is moving all the time. So the sun, you're in the sun half the time or more. And it's just miserable. It's just miserable being outside. At least here in the city, we can go places and get inside air conditioning, but it's been hard on Abby. So we might, I, we, we're all three talking about, hey, we might end up going to um, California. I don't know, we'll let you know. I guess when you see the ocean, that means we went. <laughs> but that's what I've been doing. One evening, <clears throat> the elk just sort of walked through. I mean, they're just, they're almost sort of tame, although you're not supposed to approach them. You're not supposed to feed them. But it's amazing how many people actually do still. They now have signs everywhere because so many people want to approach the elk. I know. It's like, why would you do that? But they're still in Yellowstone. People still are approaching the buffalo and they're getting charged at. Well, it was, I don't know what day it was. It doesn't really matter. But one evening, it was starting, the sun was kind of starting to go down. We saw one elk come through, then another one. So altogether, there were four. There were four males with really big racks. And they're getting closer and closer. I've got some, I'll, I will show this. I got some good footage of the elk. And you can watch this while I'm talking about them. But it was really nice. They really got close. They were just, I don't know eight, nine feet from, from a vehicle. And then they walked over. They were just right almost behind uh, Paul's ProMaster uh, Rams high top. So that was pretty cool. That was a good highlight. Going to the Grand Canyon was really a good highlight. My girlfriend hadn't been there in a very long time. So that's why one reason I wanted to invite her up. She's kind of a new nomad. And she says it's been a long time. And I wanted to show her where you could camp up there so she knows. Well, and for her to experience it. But then the next morning what we did was we all went and saw the, um, the sunrise. I did that two years ago. And it was really awesome. A lot of people go. We had to take off around 4.30 in the morning. It was still dark. But we went and saw the sunrise. Yeah, we had a good time. It was really a good time. I still got in my exercising. They have these picnic tables that are made of stone like they do like in Tucson. And so I could lay out my blue um, my blue blanket and I could get my exercise out there. That was really nice to be exercising again outside. What I have found, the parks and Flagstaff, they're not conducive to exercising the way that my Tucson parks were. So I don't know why. They just don't have the same picnic tables, the areas, and they don't really even have the uh, solar panels um, that you can park under to get some shade. So, but we've got our spots in Flagstaff where we know where the <clears throat> solar panels are so we can get under them. Now that we're back, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll talk more about the Grand Canyon probably the next video. I'll show you a little bit more. We did get ready. We had, you know, I want to show you just briefly. Um, you know, like getting ready. Once we got there, it was nice. Again, you know, we got to get out our chairs and actually get outside more. I did get a little bit more sun. I'll tell you, you know, lately I've been staying out of the sun. 
I just don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I've already got enough, you know, like sunspots on my face. And getting older, you know, I just turned 70, you know. <laughs> and I didn't, I'm just really going to be more careful about my uh, skin. And really, really take care of it. Even though I have sunscreen on, it's just or sunblock. I'm just staying out of the sun, but I did get a little bit of sun last week um, at the Grand Canyon camping. So, I mean, you can't help it. You can't go to the Grand Canyon to stay inside your van, right? Or stay inside. But they do, they do have a lot of um, activities at the Grand Canyon. We went to the El Tabor. It's a really, it's built in 1907, as I remember. Yeah. And by Mary Coulter, she's like the Grand Canyon architect. She did a lot of the architect, the designs of the buildings um, around the Grand Canyon. But the El Tavor Hotel is still functioning. We went to the hotel in the dining room. Oh my gosh, it was pretty expensive, but we had to make reservations. But it was it was very fancy, fancy dining. Oh yeah, <clears throat> even had dessert. But it was good. It was really good. And it was, um, I think I had French onion soup. Wasn't that hungry. And Paul had a special, um, it was like a different kind of a taco, I guess, but it really didn't look like a taco. It was their version high end lunch taco. And then we had this all oh, wonderful a la mode, um, <clears throat> apple strudel, apple strudel, homemade apple strudel. Oh my gosh. It was like a pie sort of. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really great. And and the El Tavor Hotel has <clears throat> two huge porches with rocking chairs. Oh, my gosh. So <clears throat> there were a couple of days it got so hot at the campsite. <clears throat> and what, what are you going to do in the afternoon? The sun's on our car. The sun is coming down on us. We just drove in to town and we went into the El Tavor again. And we just sat there and people watched because it was air conditioned. <laughs> that was, yeah. I don't think anybody was expecting it to be so hot here. I felt really bad. I mean, people come from all over the world to see the Grand Canyon. And they make the plans so much ahead of time. I felt bad for them because, oh my gosh, it took me an hour and a half to get there. It probably took them days to organize this and pay for it. Fly there. Well... I felt kind of bad for them because all the things that they wanted to do, it was too hot to do. I saw a couple families rent bikes and this was in the afternoon. I thought, oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. It was like 95 degrees biking outside with small kids in 95 degree weather. I don't think they totally understand Arizona heat, the dry heat. And that sun beating down, oh my gosh. But there were a lot of vacationers there. You know, you see them from all over the world. You hear them talking, the, you know, the accents, the language. So <clears throat> it was good to see uh, the Grand Canyon again. So what else is going on? Well, hmm. <sighs> got a shower today. <laughs> I, I got another shower today. Um, I was thinking, well, maybe we need to, you know, uh, get another hotel for a couple of days. My friend actually got a hotel for two days and it said a couple of days ago, it said that it was, that today was going to be the worst. I just looked and there's a new update that <clears throat> the next two weeks, it's going to be like 96, 97. That's unbearably hot for people living in the van. We don't have air conditioning. I mean, some people do in their in their vans, but not in my minivan. Paul doesn't have it, and my friend doesn't have air conditioning. So, <sighs> pray for us all out here. Excuse me. There's a lot of nomads here in Flagstaff right now. I've been pretty much getting recognized almost every day out here. And I, I love it. I mean, that's fine. You know, hey, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. And then they go on and they say, oh, there's so many people here. There's other YouTubers here, too. They're telling me. Um, everybody's kind of coming to Flagstaff because 
but it literally is the coolest place in Arizona. If you want to be in Arizona. So I guess we're all just going to have to write it out. I'm not sure. San Francisco's looking pretty good to me, right? So what else have I been doing? Um, I did get a couple new pillows and pillow cases. Mainly because I did take my car in to a place here, um, Heath Auto Service in Flagstaff. Well, I took it in and I, I had my coffee sitting here. There was still some in it and it obviously, it, it fell over and it literally drained coffee into my pillow and into this pillow because they both were here and I threw them away. <laughs> I was a good pillow, I, a coffee soaked pillow. They were getting older anyway. So I got new pillows and I got new pillowcases. This one I really like little bit of, I guess, hippie design or something. It goes with this. So I got that. And what else? Okay, well, let me tell you what they did. Okay, let's get comfy here. Well, <laughs> what they did was they kept it all day. They did fix, it said that there was a cable there was a cable that was twisted. So when I pulled out the, the lock wouldn't work when I latched it. And my key fob never worked on that anyways, but that's too much detail. Well, they didn't really do a good job. I can't recommend them. They really didn't. What they did for me was they made it so I could get in. Okay. But they, when they took off the part where the, where the the handle and then the thing, that was broke anyways. But the handle, they broke it when they took it off. They admitted they did that. I checked on a price, and it's like $100. They said to put the, uh, it is the actuator. The actuator is, is bad. And to get that part back, $671. Yeah, six hundred and seventy-one dollars. That's like twice, almost. That's more than twice what online said that it would be. Now I did check to see what that one part was, um, what that would cost. That's a hundred dollars. So I don't know where they're getting five hundred and seventy-one dollars worth. Well, so what? So he called me and he said, "Well, this is what's up," and I said, "Oh." I got to go, I got to think about that. Just, I thought, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way I'm spending, I mean, it's almost, well, if you think about it, it's almost grand, you know, to fix a lock. So, um, there's these two cables coming out. One is to, with the cable that would have attached to the pullet that, that now I have to pull this cable to open up the door. And then the top one is this cable. And I asked him, I said, well, what's this? What's this cable for? He goes, mm, I don't know. I didn't try that one. Well, it's the one for the lock. It was stuck. I kind of eventually, a couple of days later, I pulled it out. I go, oh my gosh, this is the lock. Well, I said, go ahead and put the door back on and discharge me for um, you testing it out and doing what you, you did so far. Well, okay. So he put the panel back on, but he didn't even put the screws in. And he didn't hook up my, um, my mirrors. And I thought, well, my mirrors don't work. As I'm driving away, my peers, mirrors don't work. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if, you know, like you got to push in to get my, um, gas, the gas lid, you know, the, the, the trap to open up something, but gas in my car. When I parked, it didn't work. I called him right. I go, I can't even put gas in my car now. So he goes, well, bring it back in the morning. I had to go back in the morning. <laughs> and they had it like three more hours. I, Paul had to drive me. I was in Paul's van. And they did, he just didn't bother to hook them up. I don't know, you know. <laughs> and so now my window, my mirrors can adjust. And I can put gas in my car. Yay. But, uh. 
What I'm dealing with now is I have to pull out this cable to open the door and I have to, I can push in and pull out the upper cable to lock it or unlock it. So I'm going to Tucson to get this fixed. Oh my gosh, I am not going to deal with anybody here in Flagstaff. I'm just not going to do it. So, so in the meantime, <laughs> let me tell you the story. In the meantime, I had to keep going in and out. So what I did was there are these, I had these bins here. Remember I had a big bin here and then another bin there. Those are in Paul's van. He's holding them for me because I had to go back and forth. So I guess that's a little bit different too. I have a lot more room in my van and I've got these new pillowcases. I wanted to tell you that story. Yeah. So that's my update, everybody. I won't go on and on, but I know that you were um, concerned about me, but uh, probably you didn't see my post. I did put a post out everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, and um, on YouTube. I had to put a post out that I'm taking a week's vacation. So I just, I just want to take a week's vacation and just take a breather. And, uh, and I did. I had fun. And I just kind of relaxed during the day. So, yeah. Now, as far as the Facebook group, Mini Vince Leaves This Nomad Life, that is no more. Uh, it was taking a lot of my time. And I don't know. It, it didn't. Why? I didn't really want to deal with it anymore. There would be people that would come on. Really great, great, great people. But every once in a while, people would come on and they'd just be kind of critical or whatever. And I thought, that's just another way for somebody to maybe critique me. And I really don't like to be critiqued. I don't think any of us enjoy it. So it was just one thing less. Now it is one thing less. So I want to thank uh, Kathy and I want to thank Julie for handling that, um, that uh, group for me. And, and it's on pause and it will, it'll kind of dissipate and disappear after a while. So just so y'all know, yeah, it just, it, it was too much. I like doing videos, but keeping a Facebook group going and keeping everything in, in, in the right mode, it just really wasn't, it, it turned out to be more than I wanted to deal with actually, cause I'm a busy girl and, uh, I'll be so glad when summer's over, everybody. Oh, my gosh. So, thanks for waiting for me to come back. I missed you guys. I really did. And I know I got some a lot of messages that you missed me, too. So, mm, good things coming. Good things are coming my way, and good things are coming your way. They're just right around the corner. We just need to get through the summer. It's just a really hot summer. I love you guys. I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. And there is a chapter in there, How to Keep Cool. How do you keep cool in the summer? It's all there. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I love you guys. And I do have neck gaiters. I've been wearing it because I usually have, I got my bathing suit under here. We just got back from a restaurant. We had a little something to eat. And I just wanted to cover up. So, but I've been keeping this thing wet and this thing wet, oh my gosh. And I've been, when I've been sitting in here, I get this wet and lay it across my legs. And I keep that fan going. So, love you guys. Till tomorrow. Bye.